Welcome to the Testophone restoration. I recently purchased this off of the internet and it's a beautiful old horn. It dates back to a patent stamp on this. It goes back to 1908. Uh, back to the uh, time of uh, almost the horse and carriage but certainly the first automobile. And it's not that small of a horn as you can see. It's actually longer including the horn bulb the length of my forearm. This particular version is a four horn testophone. You can see the mounting uh, bracket here and a large horn bulb. And what I'm going to do over the next few minutes is show you what I did to bring this back to working order. One of the first things that I did was to remove each one of the horns. And all you need is a crescent wrench and uh, put it around the horn the bolt, I guess, or the nut. And uh, they come off in this case quite easily. This horn set of horns is bent up a fair amount, but I, they're still in very workable condition. And there's a very uh, interesting little um, system they have on the bottom of the horn, which helps obviously to create the horn noise or pitch for the individual horn. I cleaned them up both inside and out. They could go out and get re nickeled, but or even fix up the bends in them. But quite frankly, I, they, for me at least, they add to the patina of the piece and, and I'm going to be leaving them as they are. The other thing that I found on this uh, instrument, if you will, is this is almost like a player piano. And if you undo some of these parts, There is a cylinder with inside the system that almost looks like a player piano wheel and drum. And here you can see there's a very small, if you were to be able to zoom in, there's a very small little finger which keeps light tension on a cog. And as the drum inside rotates, the, the finger holds it things in place. Now if we take the cog out, or the center drum, as you can see it's almost like a player piano in many respects. Now when I got this it wasn't in this type of condition and what I ended up doing was my best friend was a Dremel. And I spent hours using a polishing compound, I used red, the red polishing compound, and I cleaned the inside cylinder that this um, musical drum fits into. I spent hours polishing the inside and uh, certainly the rest of the cylinders uh, and components as well. And I spent hours polishing this to make sure it ran very, very smoothly. I tried putting oil on here, but ultimately what I found was the oil provided just enough restriction that it didn't run the way I wanted it to, so I, I cleaned the oil off. And all it's a matter of doing is replacing the cylinder and make sure, as you can hear the clicks, that it runs evenly. The other little interesting part to this is this little lever here. And as you can see, it moves back and forth and it advances that inner drum. So as you push the horn bulb in, it advances the arm. It also advances the cylinder on the inside to one of the slots and then it redirects air to one of the four horns. But as you withdraw, it also then, by the suction of the horn bulb, pulls the arm back and resets the cylinder drum. As you can see, there's a small arm here and it's currently in the forward position. When you depress the horn bulb, it advances the arm and as you retract or release the horn bulb to suction, I've got my bolt on the other side a little too tight, it will advance or retract back on the, on the cylinder cogs. And as it rotates, the cylinder, with, due to the, the slots on the inside, directs air to a different horn. Sometimes it sticks, it's not perfect, but um, I've got it working fairly well. The other thing that had happened is this is a large horn bulb and they just slip over the top 
of the end of the horn. This is a fairly large horn bulb. It's the largest one I could find. I had a medium sized horn bulb and what I found while well, the depression or the squeezing of the horn bulb made the sound of the horn, there was not enough suction to draw back the cylinder to reset it to the next position. The other interesting little component on this uh, horn is there's a little piston that goes on the inside and if you remove a screw from the bottom end here, get my fingers to work properly, take out the screw, you're able to withdraw this portion of the horn and out comes this little piston. Now when I got the, the, the horn system, there was nothing in this small area, but as you can see there's some very fine little fingers in there and what I did was take a piece of rubber and I arced the top and I bent the piece of rubber in so it fits very nicely uh, within those fingers and within the outer diameter uh, of where those fingers reside. On the flip side are air holes. So what happens is when you are pushing the air in, the rubber cylinder pushes against a hole and thereby forces the arm forward. When you release the horn bulb, the suction pulls the rubber stopper out away from the holes and allows things to retract and reset. As you can see by the shininess, I spent hours on cleaning that up and polishing that as well. So it's a nice shiny piece of brass. Lastly, I found with this cap that goes on the end around this portion of the horn, it's very fine thread. And what I found is I was starting to uh, almost strip the threads. You have to be very careful when you're putting it back on that you thread it on correctly or you'll, or you'll offset the threads. And it, sometimes it takes me a few times to get it back on, but with a little bit of patience and a little bit of time, you get it to work just right.